If you're in Mondalga, Kunama and Batlo, it is too late to leave. Seek shelter as the fire approaches. She's coming down. It's four days into the new year and Batlo farmer Sean Ryan isn't going anywhere. I remember hearing them calling for air support on the scanner at one stage and they said they're unavailable. Thick smoke and a lack of available aircraft limited how many water bombers could help fight the fire. There was a couple of fixed wing, like smaller fixed wing aircraft and a helicopter were about all we saw do maybe half a dozen runs at the most into the west of Atlow. So the Ryan family fought on, on their own. Really, we had nothing. We had two old land cruisers with spray rigs. We had a ute with a thousand litre pod and a firefighter and garden hoses. Just had the hoses out, just normal spray rig, just running water and as much as you could, put it on mist, put out the main front, but that's all we could do. I think there's 12 houses from the end of the street and I don't know how the boys did it, but they saved 10 of them. Although the Ryan family home was spared, 80% of their land is now charred and useless. We know aircraft don't put out fires, but they give you a fighting chance to save life and property. They can take the intensity out of those fire fronts, allow the ground crews to get in and do their work. Um, we, we just haven't had enough aircraft. Now we have four states ablaze. The former Commissioner of Fire and Rescue New South Wales, Greg Mullins, has been fighting fires as a volunteer since October. No property is worth a life, so we don't risk lives for properties. He warned the government last year that there weren't enough aircraft for the devastating fire season that lay ahead. We're coming into what I think is the most dangerous fire season, I've, dangerous build-up to a fire season I've seen since 1994. Our national government doesn't recognise that there's a disaster heading their way. So, um, again, please listen, Prime Minister. Today's decision puts more boots on the ground puts more planes in the sky. In December, Scott Morrison announced an $11 million top-up for aerial firefighting. Weeks later, he pledged annual funding and an extra $20 million to urgently lease four more large water bombers. The same day, he publicised it in a video for social media. Well, look, it's fascinating on a day when homes were being lost, lives were being lost, but I'm glad they had time to do a Liberal Party promotional video how good is that? Despite the urgent funding, the planes still haven't touched down. They're delayed by natural disasters in the US and the Philippines. In December, the National Aerial Firefighting Centre asked Canada for water scooping planes, but they were grounded, iced in by the frigid Canadian winter. It's now scrambling to find others and it's hopeful a single scooper from Malaysia will touch down shortly. It's also asked France for aircraft, but there are no guarantees. It's brought into sharp focus Australia's reliance on leased aircraft. Right now, 145 aircraft are contracted to fight fires across Australia including 74 helicopters like the Ericsson Sky Cranes and 71 fixed-wing aircraft. The planes include large aerial tankers like the 737, which can drop retardant ahead of fire lines, smaller intelligence-gathering planes like Cessnas, and planes which can scoop up water to dump on flames. The problem is most of those aircraft are leased from North America and our fire seasons are starting to overlap. Associate Professor Trent Penman studies the impact climate change is having on bushfire behaviour. There's always been a small overlap, but across the rest of the US we're seeing an extended fire season as well, and our fire season's becoming more intense earlier means that the worst part of their fire season and the worst part of our fire seasons are seemingly overlapping at the moment, and we'd expect that overlap to increase into the future. We need more resources. We don't have enough resources. We run out of aviation assets. Pilot Dom James has been flying firefighting planes for nearly 20 years and thinks the time has come for Australia to buy a permanent fleet. 
we're already seeing foreign aircraft having less and less opportunity to come down to Australia as their fire season grows. And as that gets longer and longer and eventually overlaps the Australian fire season, that will rule out any ability of foreign aircraft to come and fight our fires here in Australia. So we've got to be able to have our own aircraft to fight our own fires ourselves. The head of the National Aerial Firefighting Centre, Stuart Ellis, says it's on the agenda. It's a decision for each state and territory whether they lease or whether they purchase. But speaking with them, there are indications that it is likely that there may be more purchased um, large air tankers in country in the future, as well as um, leased aircraft which will come over for our fire season. He says the centre's always leased aircraft for three months, from November to the end of February. We are finding now that we're going to need to extend that period significantly longer um, and commence you know, potentially in September and we'll be operating, especially with these aircraft recently announced, through to March. So, you know, that's a significant portion of the year. And significantly more money for the states and territories and the Commonwealth to fight over. A spokesman for the Prime Minister says he's acted on everything the fire chiefs have asked for. Firefighter Greg Mullins is sure more planes will save lives and property. So I was fighting fires in Batemans Bay on New Year's Eve, all day on New Year's Eve. We lost hundreds of homes and if we'd had more aircraft able to drop on those raging fire fronts, our ground crews might have been able to get in to save more homes.